as I was saying, people, who's calling you? Who do you think that is? Who's knocking? But the thing is, it's hard. I'm going to tell you why it's hard. Because a lot of people don't want deliverance from anything. They think who the sun sets free is free indeed to do as they please. I read a post, somebody was like, well, God made all things good. Yes, that's true. That's you trying to use the word to do anything. All right, then I can go murder. All things are good. All things. I can steal too. All things are good. You got to read your Bible. You understand? He said he gave you all things to enjoy. Right? But he also told you things that are not quite joyful or not quite good or actually quite evil. So when you're using a word to clarify yourself, make sure you're not clarifying and justifying evil. Does it make sense? God is angry with the wicked every day. God will use the evil and the wicked to destroy each other. So, be careful. Be careful. As I was saying, the enemy loves to entice you. I talked about this yesterday. You're going through changes in your life, and it's like you're getting there. Do you get that call? You're getting there. Do you get that tempting, temptation? You get that enticement what do you do resist the devil and he will flee from you resist the temptation the righteous will suffer resisting temptation is a form of suffering for good eventually after you done resisted so many times it gets easier no you want that no after so long, people are gonna stop even asking you. They're gonna stop calling you. Cause you just said no enough. The Bible said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. This is not yes, man. You gotta say yes every time. You ain't gotta say yes to everything. The Bible just tells it, said it. Do not consent with somebody in an evil matter. What that means say? No. 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 Get used to it. Get used to the word N O. No. Get used to it. No can save you a lot. But also get we're used to the word yes. Know what to say yes for. You understand? If the Bible says let your yes be yes and your no be no, utilize those two things. They will help you. Resist the devil. Normally involves a no. You know. But when I say resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Let me just give you some spiritual enlightenment. He's not going to be there with horns. He's not going to be red. You're not going to know it's exactly him. You're like, there you go. If it was that easy, that would be great. I would love that. Be like, okay, I see the devil coming. Red horns. I mean, black horns, red body, hooves. That's the devil. I know how to resist the devil. But the devil is kind of come, in most of the time, human form. In the form of people who are operating in his ways. The children of error. If you're not trying to save them or warn them, Resist them. No. You're going to be like, you devil, you. <laughs> you devil. Get away from me, you devil. No. No. You got to call everybody a devil. You understand? Because they might not be. It might just be under his influence. You understand? No. No. Don't be evil with it. You devil, you. 
But if they want to call you a devil, Paul went right back. I'm taking them pointers from Jesus. You a devil. You a devil. You a devil. You a devil too. One of us gotta be one. <laughs> I'm taking that from Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They're telling me that I can call somebody that's a devil, they call me one. You devil, you. But that's not always the case. People. The enemy's gonna come in the form of people. Places. Things. You gotta know what kind of environment you're stepping into. And if you're not strong enough, let me tell you something. The enemy will jump on you and tear you apart if you're not strong enough. When the Bible says enemy, it can come in many forms. When the Bible says devil, it can come in many forms. When the Bible says demons, it can have many forms. You understand? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us away from evil. You got to know evil things. You got to know what the Bible calls, considers evil. And then you got to talk about, go back to it again. Are you walking in the flesh or are you walking in the spirit? Then you got to go back to yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. The Bible says, if give people anything they ask of them, Hmm. Watch this. But the Bible said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. All right. Your best friend come to you. Or somebody close to you come to you. Hey, Houston. You know where I can get some cocaine? The Bible says, give to them that ask of you. So, does that mean go out and go find some cocaine and give to your friend? Hey, Houston, you know where I can find some prostitutes? Give to men whatever they ask. Hold up. Let me make a phone call. Hey, man, you know what some whores are? I'm just, I'm just being real with you, people. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. If it's evil... If you're using your discernment correctly, you're gonna know. Stop trying to be that best friend. You know, you can come to me for anything. I got you. I got you, man. You ain't gotta go out in the streets and get so dope. I got dope. <laughs> yeah, I'm a joker. I'm just being real with you. This is how it's gonna present itself to you most of the time. This is how it's gonna present it to, to you. I'm going to tell y'all a secret that I done figured out through walking. I'm going to give you a, I did a video about red flags. So remember red flags. You know, it's always all sorts of red flags throughout the scripture. And it's all, all sorts of red flags in life. But I'm going to give you a very quick lesson. Take it. Normally, as if it's too hard, and I'm not saying give up when something is hard. Let's say you smoke weed. I'm just gonna use weed. I'm gonna use you an alcoholic, or you not an alcoholic, you drink. All right, and it's like every way you turn, something's like ain't going quite right. Let's say you, you can't find no weed. I'm talking to regular people about regular everyday things. I'm not judgmental. Let's give you an example. You can't find none, right? You call this person up. I ain't got none. Golly. So you ride over to the next place. I'm out too. Hmm. You're getting further and further away. It's it's just too much. It might be like you need to sit back and be like, not today. That might be a warning. Use your discernment in regards to everything. I just use that as an example. You understand? I'm not hating. I don't hate nobody who smoke. That's your prerogative. 
You understand? That's on you. What I will tell you about marijuana, and I'm going to tell you this through experience, it does something to your spirituality. It does something with your spirit. The Bible says be sober-minded. And when the Bible says be sober-minded, the first thing that comes to people's mind is alcohol. All right? Can you be drunken through marijuana? For all those marijuana smokers who love to talk about drinkers, <laughs> answer that question. Can you be in a dazed and confused state on marijuana? I know you can, because I used to smoke. Just go. Oh. <laughs> Just being real. So, think when the Bible says sober-minded. Don't just think about alcohol. Think about anything that can cloud your judgment. Sober-minded. All things are good. I love weed is from the earth. I love people when they say that, right? But I was reading uh, Genesis one day. He's like, God has given you every green herb for meat. <laughs> Figure it out. Maybe you should be cooking with it. Maybe God's okay with you. Making some brownies out of herbs. I'm just being real with you, people. I smoke cigarettes. Yes. I might even cuss a few times. Yes. I drink wine. Yes. Maybe even take a shot every once in a while. Yes. Am I a hypocrite? Am I? Am I a hypocrite? You see, the Holy Spirit is not designed for you to lie about anything. No, I'm not going to lie to you about anything. But one thing I will say, God has given me self-control. Some things are harder to control than others. You understand? And the Bible is all about self-control. Overindulgence in anything could be a problem. Something you can't live without can be a problem can cause you not to be sober minded do you understand I can't live without a PlayStation be sober minded guess what a PlayStation does if you play too much of it it clouds your judgment it gets you in a drunken state <laughs> come on people for your Christians then when you read sober minded the first thing come to your mind is alcohol there are many forms of addiction there are many things that can cause you not to be sober. During that time frame back in the day, wine was probably the, the number one thing that people were in a drunken state. I'm sure they didn't have pharmaceutical companies where you can buy pills. Weed probably was another thing that was running rapid back then. But the, <laughs> but the Bible don't really talk about weed that much. But you got to use your common sense that God gave you. In regards to sober-minded, this I'm gonna get. I'm gonna put you in a mindset. Grow in a state where I can live without anything. Do you hear what I said? Get in a state where you feel I can live without anything. That means if I don't have a beer today, I can go without. If I don't have some weed today, I can go without. If I don't have a Xanax pill today, I can go without. Do you understand? If I don't have sex today, I can go without. If you're married, just can throw that in there. I can go without. Learn to be able to go without. Then nobody can entice you. They say you ain't got nothing. Guess what? The enemy is going to call you. Hey, everything you need is over here. Are you operating in the spirit? Are you operating in the flesh? Which one? Ask yourself these questions in life. I told you I'm not your regular type teacher. I'm not hateful. By no means. By no means. Yesterday I was 
pondering her question, but I'm going to get back to you when God give me the answer on it. You understand? But it's it's a deep question. It's, it's a lot of sin that's out in the world, and some sins are permanent almost. Some, like murder, murderers don't go kill 24-7. Liars don't just lie 24-7. Thieves don't just steal every minute of the day. There are sins that last longer. And I'm going to just throw this out there and what I ask God about. Because I believe, I know I love everyone. But it's like sexual sin. The homosexual spirit. That spirit right there. That sin right there. It lasts longer than any other. They walk with it. They talk in it. I ask God a question about this. Because I want to answer. You understand? Why is that one so deadly? Why is it so hard to break free from? If you have any input on this, let me know. But once I get the answer, I'll get back with you on that. Because I want to know how to reach them. Not in a hateful way. In a way to the truth. To convert. And I know God's going to give me the answer. Because I asked it. He's going to give it to me. You understand? Have a blessed day, people. Keep that word. Teach it to your kids. Learning how to talk to people in regular conversations. That's why when I talk a lot of times, I try to talk regular to you like I'm talking to you, like we sitting right here. I'm not trying to preach to you. I'm talking to you regular. Because that's how the conversation is going to go most time. You can turn the scripture all the time. John 3, verse 1 says, okay, that's cool. But read the Bible and see how Jesus talked. You understand? You got to know how to talk to people. Some with rebuke, some with warning, some with comp compassion, discernment. Know how to talk to people. Don't run away from sinners. Because guess what? You'll be running away from yourself. You understand? Learn how to talk to people. Especially y'all church folk. Learn how to talk to people. Remember what I just said? That you devils... Okay, God, have mercy. Lord, learn how to talk to folks. Get to know people. Am I saying indulge with them? Am I saying hang with them? Talk to them. It don't take long to have a brief conversation. Five minutes sometimes, ten minutes. But get to know them. Let them know this is what a Christian is. Not that. Have a blessed day.